this room, who works in the data team? Raise your hand. Okay. And how many developers do we have? Some also. Well, I'm sure both of you get a lot of requests from the business team, right? So today, I'm going to show you how to ship AI in order to actually answer more efficiently to all of those business requests. So for that, let's all put ourselves in the shoes of a data scientist for a retailer company specialized in bookstores. Let's imagine that this morning you received an email from the marketing team asking you for some help in order to enhance their marketing strategy. So currently they are doing their marketing manually and they write all of the emails for the marketing campaigns and they want to enhance this with AI in order to make it scalable. So they are launching a new campaign for the launch of a new book and they want to offer that book to some of the customer. In order to do that um, use case, you will have to go through different steps. You will have first to access your data and prepare them for the marketing use case. Then you will have to work on the machine learning model in order to predict the targets of that marketing campaign. Then you'll work on the email generation and finally how to put that in some deliverable for the marketing team. Let's get started. So, with that IQ, you will start by creating a new project in order to develop your use case. First thing first, you'll have to connect to your data and either you can connect to a bunch of different data sources or in your case, your marketing team made it even easier because they've put all of the data that you need in a data collection. So you have access to um, demographic data around your customer that have been targeted by a marketing campaign before with uh, columns indicating in they were responsive to that marketing campaign. Then you also have the same data for customers that have never been targeted by a marketing campaign before. And finally, you also have data regarding the purchasing behavior of your customer, specifically on books and other items that you sell at the uh, stores. So let's use all of them and Let's deep dive a bit in what you could get as information on your data. So you start by exploring your data with this tabular view. And right away, you can see some information such as the um, data quality information on emptiness of your columns. You can also go a bit further and analyze your uh, columns in order to know, for instance, here that only 11% of your previously targeted customer were interested by a marketing campaign. And all of that information you will get right away by exploring your data. Once you've explored it, you need to enrich it with the um, purchasing behavior that we've seen before. And to do that, you will either use your preferred language in order to code the transformation or you can also uh, try to leverage the uh, prepackaged tools that, that are at your disposal in order to actually go a bit quicker with that step. So here, you will just use that visual interface in order to perform a join between the customer data and the purchasing behavior of your customer. You can get the query that has been built behind the scene and right away, you see that your, your job succeeded and you can explore again the uh, enriched data set that you have at your disposal. So now you have all of the demographic data as well as the purchasing behavior consolidated in one single data set. Great, so now we've accessed your da our data and we've prepared it. So you need not to focus on the machine learning model in order to work on your prediction. To do that, you will focus on the flag interested column. That is your column with the um, target that you want to predict. And right away, you can create a prediction model from it. Again, that IQ is easing you the way through 
because you can just train a baseline model with the parameters that have been already de um, defined by that IQ. But for later on, you will be able to actually go through all of the parameters and change it a bit with uh, the handling on, of the features that you want to include or exclude. You can also choose the different algorithm that you will uh, train and compare. And you can even add your own custom model if you need to. Great. So now let's see what kind of results we get. So right away, you will see the two models that have been trained, the random forest and the logistic regression. You can see directly the one that is performing the best uh, in terms of the metric ROC AUC. And you can deep dive in it in order to actually make it a bit more understandable business-wise. So here you will have the decision trees, you will have also the feature of importance and their uh, marginal effect on the prediction. You can also have access to a lot of charts, then you will see the confusion metrics where you can play with the threshold in order to change the focus of your model. And once you've explored all of it and you're happy with your model, you can just directly deploy your model in your pipeline. So now you have a trained model that you want to use in order to predict the new pool of customer that you want to target for your marketing campaign. To do that, you will just go through those two items and use a prepackaged tool in order to score your customer. Again here, that IQ is giving you a way to just use the predefined setup, but you could choose to actually override the threshold, for instance, in order to uh, change it and um, define it as you wish. So now we will get a new data set that has been scored with our new pool of customer, and we know who we want to target for our campaign. OK, great. So second step is done. Now we want to go through the generation of the emails that we will send to uh, our customer. So to do that, you will actually leverage generative AI. So how does it work in DialIQ? You will be able to go through what is called the prompt studio in order to make some tests around um, the prompt that you will have to define to uh, generate the emails. First thing first, you'll have to select the LLM that you want to use among all the ones that have been put at your disposal by your administrator. So here, Let's say you want to use uh, OpenAI. Then you will write the uh, prompt that you want to um, perform. So here we are asking uh, the LLM to actually just um, write an email to our customer and check if the customer has been uh, buying a book on their last visit or if they've bought something else. So we are checking that against the um, data set that we've prepared. And right away, we can run the prompt on some test cases. The idea here is that you get a direct information on the costs that are generated by your prompt. So that way, you can monitor the costs of all of the regenerative AI um, jobs that you're performing. And also, you will see directly some test cases in order to define if that prompt is relevant for you or not. You will be able, if you want to go further, to add some example, for instance, and uh, in that way to fine tune the prompt that you are using. So let's say you're happy with that prompt. So you will export it as a recipe, meaning that you want to perform it over all of your uh, customer that you want to target, because we have more than just the test cases that we've uh, tried. And we will run that new um, job on all of, our, all of our data set. So now we have our 56 customer that we want to target that have a uh, email that has been generated by our LLM. That's great, but how can we make sure that that email is really relevant for all of the uh, customer that we will target? For that, you've decided to ask the marketing team to actually provide you with another data set with some manuals emails in order to compare what they would have written manually versus what the LLM is giving you. Now we can directly compare, so the email on the left that has been written manually by the marketing team 
with the one that has been generated by the LLM. So that's a great way to, uh, to compare a bit, but it can be a bit long to compare it row by row. So what you will do is actually leveraging a tool that is giving you a way to evaluate your LLM with some metrics. So to do that, you will just set it up, so meaning that you want to compare the LLM output with the ground truth, that is the email written by your marketing team. Then you want to compute the BERT score, which is a score of similarity between the two emails that have been generated. You will select the LLM as a judge to use. And finally, you will also select the environment, the code environment that you need to use to perform that action. Now we are using the LLM as a judge in order to evaluate our prompt recipe. Okay, so what you'll get as a result is basically um, a series of metrics that will evaluate the uh, precision recall and F1 score of your prompt. Here you can see that we have pretty good scores. It's not perfect, we could fine tune it a bit more, but these scores are enough for you to say that these generated emails are good. I want to go with that, with this one for a start. Okay, so that's great. Now we can say that we've done the email generation and we are good to ship it to the marketing team. And how actually are we going to ship it? So to do that, you're going to once again leverage generative AI, but this time in order to create an agent. So an agent is basically a series of tools that will, you will use in order to make it available to your marketing team. So here, again, I'm choosing the LLM that I want to use for my agent. And then I will set up a series of tools that uh, will help the marketing team to get lots of information. So first, you will give them access to a way to get all of the targets of the marketing campaign, then to get the data around one specific customer, another one to get the customer email, and another one to actually send the email. Great, so now we have an agent. How are they going to use it? Well, basically, in order to use it, they will be able to directly use a visual interface such as this one, that is a chatbot, where they will be able to ask in natural language different questions that will uh, leverage the agent that you've built before. So here, Let's say the marketing team is asking for the list of the te top 10 customers to target. So the agent is going to choose the right agent to answer that question and give you in natural language again the answer. OK, so now we want to focus on Alex Smith. Give me the, um, let's say, the purchasing behavior of Alex Smith. So now my agent is actually going to focus on the second tool in order to give you the answer specific to your question. We can go a bit further, give me the email that I should send. So now the third tool is going to take care of generating, of getting the generated email. So now we have the email that has been um, written. Maybe we want to fine tune it a bit, and that's the way to give autonomy to uh, the marketing team. So here I want to add a call to action to visit again. So now, again, the LLM is going to take care of changing a bit the email in order to add a call to action to visit again. Would you like to send this email? Let's say we want to send that email. Now we are leveraging the fourth tool in order to actually send the email to Alex Smith. And if we look at our mailbox now, we have a new um, email that has been sent with the call to action to visit again. So basically, in 10 minutes, you've seen how you can scale the uh, business use case that you have and answer to all of the business requests more efficiently. Don't hesitate to come to me afterwards if you have any question, and you can scan the QR code if you want to try DataIQ with our free trial. Thank you.